on today's show. We discuss the Raptors' dominant win in Oakland, whether we're sleeping on the Pacers, and OKC's late game execution. Who's the best player to watch when he's on fire? Who's the front runner for sixth man of the year? And it was a good week for the Wonder Boy in a brand new edition of the Meme Team. It's Thursday, December 13th. The starter starts now. Sweet world, and welcome to the starters. I'm J.E. Skeets, that's Tass Mellis, that's the Aussie, Lee Ellis. And over yonder, well, that's the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. Hey-o! Hey-o! Trey, what's up, man? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, there was a pretty funny moment in last night's Hornets game. It happened after Jeremy Lamb knocked down a huge shot for the Hornets, put him up by two. Malik Monk celebrates by running onto the court which eventually earned the Hornets a technical foul for having six guys on the court because the game wasn't over yet. That earned him a stern talking to from disappointed dad and Charlotte Hornets owner Michael Jordan even gave him a couple of playful head slaps. All's well that ends well though. The Hornets won. The play didn't end up really mattering, but still a pretty funny moment. And it brings us to today's question. How have you disappointed Michael Jordan? Yes, you personally. For me, it was taking this picture with Grant Hill for a few reasons. Number one, I had on a Detroit Pistons jersey. That's strike one. Number two, Grant Hill went to Duke. That's strike mm. two. Strike three, fitted jeans. MJ keeps it <laughs> flowing. You guys know that, but we want to hear from you. So let us know on Twitter, how have you personally disappointed Michael Jordan? Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. That's why Michael Jordan loves Lee. He's got Lots very of baggy, flowing pants. Ooh, Favorite good. starter. They're coming back in style, they man. Probably Unfortunately, are. true. All right, get your tweets in tonight. We got a fun one. We're going to talk about Kyrie Irving taking over that game against the Wizards. We got a brand new edition of the Meme Team and very solid play. But let's start with a little true or false. We got those true or false questions from our man TK, and let's debate the answers. Here we go. The Raptors beat the Warriors again last night, sweeping the season series, and this time around, they did it without Kawhi Leonard. Kyle Lowry led the way with 23 as all five Raptor starters were in double figures, showing the kind of Raptor teamwork usually reserved for hunting in a kitchen. True or false, the Raptors don't need Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Come on Balky Bartokamus, don't be ridiculous. Yes. Uh, it's, I was, false. I was, it's very false. I was actually pretty unsatisfied with, with this victory from the Raptors' side. I wanted a close game. I wanted to see everything on the line in the fourth quarter. I don't think this game really taught us anything. <laughs> it, it did. They the, killed the Warriors. The Warriors played so bad. Second night of a back-to-back. -back. I mean, going into this game, the Warriors were clear favorites. Yes, they were. Especially when Kawhi goes out. And then Jonas Valanciunas goes out as well. I think this is the most impressive two games the Raptors have played all season long. I think you're right. Yeah. Maybe maybe in franchise history, but some maybe, people are saying, yeah. when you go and look at the back-to-back -to, -back to beat the LA Clippers and then to beat yeah. the Warriors without Kawhi, you're right. The Warriors lost by 20 at home. They scored 93 points. They shot very poorly they played defense very poorly it just didn't feel like anything close to their ceiling no, that and that, that's not satisfying to me if right. I'm a Raptors okay. fan you know but I want to see a good game I want to see again just to see what everybody's got in the fourth quarter we didn't see that whatsoever yeah but I mean you take that still you'll yeah, take the sure. result but I think there was complacency from the Warriors because of the situation that the Raptors cool. were coming in well especially with Kawhi being out yeah, I course. think they were really pumped to play against Kawhi and then 30 minutes before the game he's deemed out with yeah. a hip injury and I think that deflated them I think that had a a big, big impact. Yeah, and, and you look as well, you always think that the Warriors are going to have that avalanche sort of run where they go on that streak. Yeah. Uh, uh, Steph and then Clay and Kevin Durant hit three threes, but Steph and Clay last night just really couldn't hit anything. They were and wide they, open. And, yeah, exactly. They, they had a terrible, terrible night shooting the ball, but the good thing for me Maybe about this... Maybe that's the secret. Leave them open. <laughs> <laughs> the thing for me about this, uh, you know, for the Raptors is they never at any point gave up or, or took their foot off the gas. Yeah. You know, Nick Nurse was made sure that they didn't give the Warriors any sort of daylight or any sort of chance to get back in because one or two of those threes can trigger a bigger run. It didn't happen last night. And again, the, 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 the Raptors coming in on the second night of a back night, that's a tough little uh, trip they're on right now. That's very impressive. Yeah, a couple things. To, to answer again the initial question, are the Raptors better without Kawhi Leonard? False in the playoffs, no doubt. You're going to need some isolation sort of play, some scoring in clutch time situations. It wasn't last night, but you're going to need that. Kawhi's the best guy in the Raptors to give you that. That's going to happen in the playoffs. You need a guy like that. You need a superstar to go get you a bucket. And, oh, yeah, he's one of the best perimeter defenders in the league as well. But maybe in the regular season this is true. 
in all honesty. I mean, Nick Nurse even talked about it after the game. He said, we rely a little bit less when Kawhi's out of the lineup, because he missed a good chunk of games here now. We rely less on individual scoring, and we play more as a team, and maybe it moves around a little bit it more. It does. I think that's fair. Uh, again, that can get you a whole bunch of wins maybe in the regular season. It changes in the playoffs, as we've seen time after time after time. Sure. The injury to Jonas Valanciunas, I mean, this was an amazing night for Raptors fans, but this was a bummer. You yeah. know, Draymond Green, and look, I'd li- I would like to point this out. This is not dirty, okay? I know Draymond Green has a, 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 a hilarious reputation at times for kicking guys and all that. He took a swipe of the ball, and he unfortunately caught JV on the thumb, and it's not good. It, he, it looked like it killed him. It did. Yeah. He got surgery. He's going to be out a month. So that's a bummer because this was the best we had seen JV play against the Warriors up until that injury. So that's a bit of a bummer. But Moose came in. I mean, this win also showed the Raptors' depth. I mean, Van Vliet starting this game. He was picking up Curry full court. He was hitting big shots. You had Moose coming in, you know, again, it turned into a little bit of garbage time, but he, he was contributing as a big. That's why they're going to win all these regular season games. Yep, so, that, sure. I mean, that sucks that JV's out, but it shows again the depth. It is pretty cool how Greg Monroe can keep it professional like that and come yeah. in and be a backup center when he's not playing at all and play those minutes. And I think a nice little positive for the Raptors, the Warriors didn't see Kawhi Leonard once this season. So, if they meet in the finals, they haven't seen him yeah. all season long. That is a nice little bonus. You surprise him in game one, just like the Spurs he sort of did in 2017. When 2017? What year was that? When they surprised him in game one and Kawhi was dominating there. It was 2017. Yeah, all right. Next Feels one like here, eons right? ago. All right, after 11 games on the shelf, Victor Oladipo returned to the Pacers last night, came back from a knee injury, didn't miss a beat as the Bucks, or the Pacers handled the Bucks pretty easily on their way to a fifth consecutive win. Indy's currently 18 and 10 and just a half game out of second place in the Eastern Conference. So true or false, people are sleeping on the Pacers. Yeah, I think this Very is true. true. I, I, think so. I think this is true because I think when we talk about the Eastern Conference, and I'm just as guilty of this, we talk about the four teams at the top of it. We talk about the Raps, the Sixers, the Celtics, who now have it going. And then, who am I forgetting? The Bucks. The Bucks. The Bucks. We don't really include the Pacers generally in that. And no. they need to be right there in that discussion, especially how they've played without Victor Oladipo, who came back last night but wasn't asked to score a ton because they did it with defense. And they've been doing that all season long. They're the second best defense in the league right yeah. now. That's unbelievable. They're better than those Celtics on that side of the ball. Big part of it is Miles Turner blocking shots left and right. He had another great game last night. And Thaddeus Young. He locked up Giannis last night. He truly, truly did. This is the best I can remember this season of someone playing Giannis in a one-on-one situation. Got a couple strips on him, made life difficult, couldn't even get shots off Giannis. He only got seven shot attempts in total. That was a great... And and Thaddeus brought it on the offensive end as well, getting 25, 11, 4, all the steals. That's how he gets on those boards with MJ. That was a dominant win uh, from the Pacers, and yeah, I think we are sleeping on them. I don't don't think they're better, though, than fourth in the Eastern Conference. I think that's about the ceiling right now for the Pacers. I think they're good, but they've also struggled against teams that are 500 over this year. They're 5 and 7. So they're about middle of the pack. I think they're better than a lot of teams in the East, but I don't think they're better than the Raptors or the Bucks. All the sixes. I don't know. Yeah. They Last might. Night. They might be better than the Bucks. Last. I don't think the. I don't think the Bucks would want to see the Pacers in a playoff series. It could be sort of a Pelicans Blazers type thing where it just the matchups work well but for, for Indiana. That, that game last night, Thaddeus Young, you know, one of the best games he's ever played. Yeah. If, if this is a playoff series, the Bucks makes huge adjustments in that next game. Giannis is getting way more shots. They're going to hit some threes. They couldn't hit a three last night. True. So that one game, they were fantastic. But I, again, I don't think in in the course of a playoff series right now, I would take. Indiana over over Milwaukee or over Philadelphia, Boston, or Toronto. Well, they've been missing their best player for 11 games this season. That, that's big. If you were just to read headlines from this year and not watch any basketball, you think the Bucks are a championship contender and the Pacers don't exist. Right. Really, you you don't really talk about them whatsoever. But they're a half game out behind the Milwaukee Bucks, a, a second Bucks? spot. Not not yet, but they also haven't had their best player. So it, I think it, it's hard to say which one uh, can can they grow with Victor Oladipo. Heck yeah, they took LeBron James to seven games last year in in the first round of the playoffs. That was Victor Oladipo's first year as a number one guy. Mm. So I was, I was looking forward to him going into this season and the growth of all those guys around them. I think they really have something special in that locker room. I think they do belong amongst the East elite. Again, half game out of second spot. Victor Oladipo hasn't played 11 yeah. games. They could easily be the second team. Now we talk 
point differential, the Bucks are kicking butt, uh, and, and actually the Celtics are, are really great there too, far better than the Pacers. So the Pacers, yeah, they, they're beating some bad teams, uh, and they're beating them in close games. But I, I think there's a chemistry there that we just haven't seen quite yet. And a big part of it, you had, correct me if I'm wrong, Miles Turner for your most improved player heading into the season. He got off to a very slow start. It looked like a bad pick. Last five or six games, he is playing like I think that guy that we thought is mm. going to take that leap, you know, averaging 17 and 10 over the last five or so. All these blocks. I mean, he's been dominant on that end of the floor. He's got his hair up in a ponytail now. He's mm. got to keep it like that because he's rolling. So, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I, 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 there's no reason not to have Indiana in the other group with these other teams. I, I sort of do believe it. All right, final one here, Trey. All right, the Thunder somehow had a chance to beat the Pelicans last night as they were down two with the ball after a furious comeback. Russell Westbrook kicks. To Alex Abrinas for a pretty open three, but sorry guys, clangerang, true or false. Despite the loss, Russell Westbrook made the right play. Mm. Uh, this is a tough one. This is a big call <laughs> what, from what, Billy what, Donovan. What? He's a 31% shooter, Alex Abrinas. He only hit two threes this whole month going yeah. into that. He was open, I get that. But I think what they didn't understand about this play, the Thunder, was when Solomon Hill kind of slips. Westbrook has that little mid-ranger to tie the game up. They went for the home run shot there with Abrinas. Now, I know it's always 20-20 hindsight to say kick it out to the guys open, but Abrinas, I mean, he, he's not shooting the ball all that well from three this year. I figured that the Pelicans were going to make sure they kept their eye on uh, Paul George. They didn't want him taking the shot. But once that defense broke down, Westbrook had that little mid-range pull-up, which he likes. And he decided not to. Was take the it. guy at the rim? Did he not he scare Westbrook yeah, a little bit if at all? Westbrook's Anthony driving, Davis? yes. No, but it. if he pulls up, he gets a clean look. So you know, a, a, just a Brinus. I like him, but he's just not shooting the ball well enough this year to sort of justify that shot for me. Yeah, it's a real 50-50 play. The pull up definitely could have been there, uh, or Brinus' shot. It could have, the pass could have been a little bit clean, a little bit closer. Oh, absolutely. Into I, the I pocket. That. that was yeah. actually. It a, wasn't the cleanest. <laughs> it wasn't the cleanest. The Brinus pass to the pass to catch. To, I don't know. I'm trying to rhyme <laughs> things. But it was a, it was a little outside, a little Bob Euchre. He had to make that play and shoot the ball. <laughs> Let's give a little love to the Pelicans mm -hmm. because they're 15 and 15. They haven't, didn't have three of their starters last night. Yep. They're 5-0 and when they've got all five of their guys healthy. They're plugging along and they're waiting for their guys to get back healthy. And Anthony Davis, he ain't missing the playoffs. They're just a weird team. They win a game, they lose yeah. a game. They win a game, they yeah. lose a game. They win a three game, starters they lose a game. on a pretty top-heavy team, that's going to happen. Let's hear from you guys. What do you think? Those true or false questions. When we come back, we'll talk Kyrie. Back with the starters, time for some fill-in-the-blank fun. There's a blank, and we fill it in. That's how it works. Trey. Kyrie was on fiery last night, going for 38 points, including 12 in overtime, as the Celtics pulled out their seventh straight win. But these weren't just normal points. They were highlight points, which might not actually count for more, but sometimes feel like they do. It was fun to watch, guys. Fill in the blank. The best player to watch when he's on fire is blank. I'm picking that guy, Kyrie Irving, because those are highlight points. They are ridiculously exciting to watch. The combination of him being one of the smaller guys in the league Finishing with both hands around the hoop, being able to handle with both hands, finishing in traffic. The crossover that Kevin Durant talked about this week is one of the most special moves in the NBA currently that not many guys can do, including Kevin Durant. Just got out of that package in that small little package when it comes to an NBA player. It sometimes looks like he's out of control, but he's actually in control all the time. I'm going with uh, playoff P, but during the regular season as well. So we remember we saw him. Uh, regular season P. Yeah, regular doesn't, season doesn't P. Roll um, off the tongue. You know, we saw him a couple of weeks ago against the Nets when he had 25 in that fourth quarter. Like, he's so silky, he just glides around yeah. the court. And he's one of those guys, he is a bit of a streaky shooter, but when he gets hot, man, is he hot. And he just gets his shot off any time he wants. And uh, I just love watching him play. He's just, he's cool and smooth. These are great silky, picks, but yeah. I, I can't believe. Let's call believe, him the Shaka. I can't silky. Believe, yeah, it's a shaka. Uh, I can't believe you didn't pick who I'm going with, Clay Thompson, all day Clay. I mean, when this guy is on, yeah. he is on, and it is a blast. I mean, earlier this year, he hit 14 threes in 26 minutes. Yep. Which sounds insane when you say it out loud. And then two years ago, he had the 60 point game where he held the ball for a total of 90 seconds. <laughs> he dribbled the ball 11 times in an NBA game and scored 60 points. That's just a whole yeah. other level of a guy catching fire. I mean, you could go with Curry as well, yeah. too, just as exciting. But. Uh, any three-point shooter who just gets on a tear like that, it's oh, great yeah. to watch. It's amazing. All right, next one, Trey. All right, Spencer Dinwiddie was in <laughs> Steph Curry mode last night, going for 39 points off the bench. The most any player has scored in a reserve role this season, probably why he got a three-year contact extension today. Dinwiddie is top five in bench scoring right now, so let's talk awards. Fill in the blank. Sixth man of the year front runner is blank. 
Uh, you got? I don't know if I spelled his name properly there. <laughs> I'm Schreiber. having problems. Spelling. Nope. Yeah. No, there's something wrong there, but anyway, you know who it is. <laughs> we uh, got an extra E. It did. Oh, that either. Schreiber's huh? been really good for the Thunder coming off the bench. He hasn't come off the bench every game, but when he has come off, he's been fantastic. Scoring the ball well, shooting the ball well. He's also just adapted and accepted his role yeah. as the backup point guard. And this is really a key signing from Sam Presti because we know from what we've seen of the Thunder the last couple of years, if Westbrook can have someone else who can just sort of take the ball out of his hands for a while and, and create and score, that could really help out. And the Thunders this season, they've been a bit of a surprise to be just how good they are. I think a lot of it is to do with Schroeder's impact off the bench. I, uh, I couldn't decide, so I'm cheating a little bit here. Mm. Uh, it was too close to call between DeMontis Sabonis on the Pacers and the Clippers big man Montrez Harrell which I th hopefully spelled his last name correct. I can never remember if there's his two R's and two L's. L's. Oh, yeah, he's got that crazy L at the yeah. end of his first name. You're right. But, like, look at the numbers these guys are putting up. Again, coming off the bench, you know, they both bring that boundless energy to their squads. The efficiency is insane for both of these guys right now. They're, you know, they're doing this on winning teams in the Pacers and the Clips. So, yeah, I give my uh, little... Hat, uh, tip of the hat to both of those guys. I don't wear hats. Everybody knows that. But if I wore one, I would tip it at them. I picked Julius Randle because it's the easiest name to spell of the six-man <laughs> candidates. No, this was award is about points. And Julius Randle is leading in points amongst these candidates that we're talking about here with 19 points per game. Nine and a half boards, excuse me, a 55% shooting. Uh, he has done a little bit of starting because Nico Miritic has been injured, but he'll go back to the bench. I'm just really, really impressed with Julius Randle fitting into this modern-day NBA game. He doesn't need a three, although he shoots a little bit. He, he's just such a bully that he manages to score no matter what. An easier name to spell than Randle. It could be a consideration. Rose. Mm -hmm. Derek that, Rose is, is scoring game, 18 yeah. points per mm -hmm. game this year and shooting like plus 40% from three, which is sort of unheard Crazy. of for a Derek yeah. Rose. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. Hey, way to go, Lee. Way to spell it right. I've got the umlauts in there anyway, yeah. so that's great. But okay. I think that's right. Okay. But, yeah. Final one, Trey. <laughs> All right, don't worry, guys. Steph Curry totally believes in the moon landing because unlike the moon landing, that whole not being sure about the moon landing thing is a hoax. As Curry told ESPN's Nick Friedle, obviously I was joking when I was talking on the podcast. Duh! Fill in the blank. I was obviously joking about blank. When I said Kevin Knox is going to win Rookie of the Year, <laughs> I, I, I fell in love with him in yeah. uh, Summer League because he looked really good, but I didn't really think he was going to win it. I thought <laughs> it was going to be down to Aiton or Luka Doncic. We know the Donk has basically sealed it already. But, hey, listen, Knox is actually shooting the ball pretty well lately. He's, He's been coming around. Uh, He's got a nice shot on him too, so he won't win it this year, but he will win awards. I was joking about Jason Maxiel making an All-Star <laughs> game about a decade ago, all right? Anytime Jason Maxiel is in the news, People tweet at me, oh, he's going to make the All-Star team yeah. still. Okay, I was wrong about that one. I, had, you know, I was high on him early. Oh, I can trump you with one. Yanni's being overrated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I said that in 2015. I was trying to tell people that he's not an All-Star quite yet. And now he's an MVP. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's hear from you guys. What were you joking about? Basically, what did you get wrong? I was joking when I said Lee was right about big pants coming back in style. <laughs> <laughs> when we return, playing. we got a brand new edition of the main team. Every week, we scour the internet to bring you the meme team, our favorite weird and wacky moments from the NBA world. At number five, during the Phoenix Suns post-game show, it looks like a normal show. Yeah, big deal. Until this lady from behind here sees herself on camera. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Hello. Straight into it. <laughs> yeah, did not skip a beat whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> having a grand old hey, time. Uh, I'm on TV. Look at this. Not in a rush to get out of there, by the looks of it, are they? Oh, no. She was there for a very long time. She shuffles off. All right, it's <laughs> okay, done. Bye. Oh, see she's ya. gone. See you later. Oh, oh she's right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Security. Yeah. It's like they kicked her out. And she's Security. <laughs> <laughs> really enjoy yourself. Uh, it was a great week for the Mavericks rookie Luka Doncic. The Ringers Isaac Lee. Luka Doncic is what I'm trying to say. The Ringers Isaac Lee and Jason Gallagher. They reunited in Dallas for a one night show to perform their smash hit here. Hello, Luka. Incredible. Gorgeous. And then on Monday, Luka was pumped after setting up DeAndre Jordan for the big slam. So he did a little celebratory sort of. Oh, sort of raise the roof, sort of a little bench press. Gently raising the roof. A little happy there. But things turned against Luca later in the week when teammate Wesley Matthews just left the poor kid <laughs> hanging on a high oh, five. Come on, though. Yeah. Come on, Wes, turn around. Wes. All right, I got it. 
At number three, after the Hawks, John Collins had a career high 30 Saturday. He was giving out high fives to everyone, but he missed a hand here. Oh. Got all face. <laughs> it's like Rick James said. What is the five fingers? Say to the face. <laughs> what? Slap. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Hawks did to the Nuggets that night. And on the same night, it's what Atlanta United did to the Portland Timbers to win the MLS yeah. Cup. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. Two, Rudy Gobert, a week ago, he got angry with the officiating. Oh. Yeah, took it out on some chalk there on the sidelines. Scared Roz there. Donovan Mitchell laughing at it on Twitter, but this was the best from Bleacher Report. At number one, after LeBron played Wade for the final time, he was heard saying their last game was either going to be played in the Staples Center or the Garden. Knicks fans went nuts. He was <laughs> thinking about coming to our team this summer. It's like Wolverine longing for good times. Oh, man. oh yeah. Uh, the Knicks fans are LeBron in the finals. I can't believe it. Yeah. And, and on the left here, the Knicks get a banner for LeBron, possibly considering them. <laughs> yeah. And it was great that Chris Bosch was Hello. on hand for LeBron and Wade's final showdown. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That actually I thought was real yeah. for a second. Yeah, there. Right? That looks it too good. It was awesome. <laughs> well done by the score. All right, there it is. The brand new edition of the meme team. When we come back, very solid play. TNT doubleheader tonight, Lakers and Rockets, followed by the Mavericks and Suns. Dirk makes his debut tonight yes. for the Dallas Mavericks. Can't wait to talk about that on tomorrow's show. All right, we asked you, how have you disappointed Michael Jordan <laughs> like Monk did last night? Trey, you got a few of the best answers. Yeah, some funny answers. Sprothbot says, when we played pickup games as kids, everyone picked an NBA player to play as. I could have picked Jordan. I picked Detlef Schrempf. <laughs> Just like Lee. <laughs> Nick says, I don't own any Hanes shirts. Unbelievable. Oh, My favorite answer is from Bart. Had the flu as a kid, only finished third in the county spelling bee. MJ put up 38 on the Jazz. Sorry, MJ. Yeah. Yeah, step, Major disappointment. Step your game up, Bart. All right, tonight's pick and play. Clipper Spurs. Well, we were all wrong about the Pelicans last night. We thought they would lose. They won. We all got the Spurs tonight against the Clips. See what happens. Lee, VSP. Yeah, going out to Utah, and it's another one here from the Jazz. They've had a very good season for VSPs, and this is why. The ball just fizzes around, everyone gets a touch, and it ends with a beautiful three-pointer here from Wow, that's nice. In the corner. Mm -hmm. That's what I call a very solid play. We had wedgie number 12 yeah. on the season. Yeah, it was nice. a good battle between yeah. the Bucks and the Pacers. These guys were scrapping it out, and that's what you need to get a wedgie sometimes. It doesn't happen on the initial shot. Sometimes. You need to get dirty. Oh, what a game from Thaddeus last night. Yeah. He did have, yeah. Brought it all. 25, 11, and five steals for Thaddeus Young. And we'll give him the honor honorary wedgie, number 12 on the season. All right. Drop podcast tomorrow. It's Friday already tomorrow. So keep an eye on the drop podcast going up around 1 p.m. Eastern time. Lots to talk about, obviously. Hope we get into Dirk's uh, debut tonight. That's it for us. We'll see you at 6 p.m. Eastern right here tomorrow. Thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, the Raptors are not better without Kawhi. Don't be ridiculous. Race tonight, people.